Hi, welcome to The Paradox. Kwanzaa is an African-American celebration of life that lasts from December 26th to January 1st. Dr. Maulana Karinga, a professor and chairman of Black Studies at California State University, Long Beach, created Kwanzaa in 1966 in response to the Watts riots in Los Angeles after searching for ways to unite the Black community. Dr. Karinga combined aspects of several first fruit harvest celebrations, such as those of the Ashanti and Zulu, to form the basis of Kwanzaa. The name Kwanzaa is derived from the phrase Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, which means first fruits in Swahili. Five common sets of values are central to the activities of the week. They are in gathering, reverence, commemoration, recommitment, and celebration. The seven principles, in Guzo Zaba of Kwanzaa, utilize Swahili words. They are Umoja, meaning unity, Kuchi Chagulia, meaning self determination, Ujima, meaning collective work and responsibility, Ujama, meaning cooperative economics, Nia, meaning purpose, Kuumba, meaning creativity, and Imani, meaning faith. Each of the seven candles signify the principles. Today, on December 30th, we celebrate the fifth principle of Kwanzaa, Nia, which again means purpose. Soul, Disney Pixar's newest animated comedy starring Jamie Foxx as the voice of Joe Gardner tackles the concept of life's purpose. Soul is written by Kemp Powers and follows a middle school band teacher whose life hasn't gone quite the way he expected. His true passion is jazz, and he's really good, but when he travels to another realm to help someone else find their passion, he soon discovers what it truly means to have soul. The movie was released on Christmas Day on Disney Plus streaming platform. This is a disclaimer. Going forward, there will be spoilers, so this is your fair warning. Overall, I really enjoyed the film. It was beautifully animated. It was well written. Jamie Foxx is a living legend, a cultural icon. Give that man his flowers, sir. If you need reaffirming, let me toot your horn. Toot, toot, beep, beep. So talented, immensely talented. I can't wait till your Mike Tyson movie comes out, but I digress. So like I said, just seeing Pixar's progression from Toy Story 95 to Soul in 2019, I'm telling you, baby, Pixar will animate the lint on your shirt. It's just so beautiful. It was so dynamic. The city was rich. The people were beautiful and rich. It was just, I enjoyed it all. I love the sense of humor of the film and the message that it conveyed, especially with all that we battled in 2020, especially with our self-isolation and quarantine. I had to come to terms with what I think my life's purpose is, what is giving me the drive to survive, what am I living for, and what does it mean to me to truly live? So I think that that sentiment was very timely. So in my critiques, I like to always end on a good note. So I'm going to start with my bad critique. And this is really just an observation about Disney as a whole and not particularly in regards to Soul. Okay, so Disney has released 58 animated feature films, beginning with 1937's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And the most recent of their animated films being 2019's Frozen 2. Soul is Pixar Animation Studios' 23rd film, their first being Toy Story in 1995. Okay, so only eight of those 58 Disney films, and we're talking about Snow White, Little Mermaid, Lion King, those type of animated films, only eight of those have had a lead character who has been a person of color. And we know that the term person of color is very vague and very vast because most of the planet's population are persons and people of color, right? So only eight of the 58. Now, Pixar has had two. The first being 2017's Coco, which I also really love. So out of those total 81 films, 58 of Disney's, 
23 of Pixar's, two have starred black people as the protagonists, Princess and the Frog and So. In both of these movies, the lead character transformed into something else that is not recognizably black and did not possess their black bodies for the majority of both movies. Tina Fey, who is a very pleasant white woman, I have enjoyed her work, voices the character of 22 in Soul, and actually her voice comes out of Joe's black body for almost an hour of the 90 minute movie. So I just wanna put that out there and you digest and process that information how you choose. I find it that it is an issue with watering down representation in general. But overall, there were abundant, the cast of Soul was very diverse and I enjoyed it. But that that is to be said, that is a pattern and those are choices that the studio made. So I do want to highlight those. So moving on, I don't want to ruin the basis of the plot. So I'll skip over how Joe's soul became untethered from his body and how he got to the great before or the you seminar. And the you seminar is where you get your personality. So you have these little baby souls. So the young souls are ushered through the youth seminar by counselors who are all named Jerry. I really like that aspect of those. And then Terry is the accountant who has lost a soul and he on a mission to find where it's at. And the Jerry's are on a mission to find 22's inspiration to live. So they end up getting linked up with Joe. And so 22 makes this great comment in the great before. And she says, you can't crush a soul here. That's what life on earth is for. And baby, that, that, that hit a little too close to home for me. But it's one of my favorite lines of the movie. I also found it interesting that your senses, touch, taste, and smell were senses a part of the body. And sight and hearing were soul senses. So in order for Joe to find his body, he is advised by the Mystics Beat Without Borders, a group of living beings who transcend to the zone via meditation and help lost souls get back to their earthly bodies. Moonwind, the lead mystic, says some people just can't let go of their own anxieties and obsessions, leaving them lost and disconnected from life. And that's something that I also really battled with this year. I think a lot of people did. And so I really enjoyed the mystics. I love them. They were all hippy dippy chanting and drumming and humming. Joe was like, y'all got a piano? I'm trying to tickle some ivies. But Moonwind was like, breathe into your crown chakra practice some mindfulness and you'll be able to locate your body so he was he was able to smell the hospital it smells like hospital in here gin smells like hospital no you said it smells like hospital and feel the cat and hear the ekg machine and so in a world when 22 ends up possessing joe's body and then joe's soul possesses the cat and he stays jamie fox ends up voicing the cat for a great portion of the movie. Watch the barbershop scene with Dez the barber. It's perfect. I'm not gonna go into great detail, but that is one of my favorite scenes from the movie. Just watch it, it's beautifully shot. That's exactly, ever since I love going to the barbershop, ever since I had to cut off all my hair and just having those existential conversations. I also really love the scene where Joe finally has the breakthrough with his mother and just seeing their dynamic. So the most profound message that I received from Soul was spoken by counselor Jerry B. He says, we don't assign purposes. A spark isn't a soul's purpose. Thinking that there is only a singular meaning to life is so basic. Regular old living is what inspires the spark and allows us to transcend. Living is jazzing. And so again, that is something that I really was confronted with this year we're always trying to what is going to be lucrative what is a hobby that can be lucrative because we live in this capitalistic society and we're always like hard charging and what is our purpose so that we can be successful but knowing that living just the mundaneness of it because we're mortal and it's fleeting and we are so vulnerable the privilege just to be able to Feel the breeze and the sun on our skin 
and inhale oxygen through like in through our nose out through our, that is the privilege right that's the purpose to actually live is the purpose of life and to do it abundantly Joe ends up getting the opportunity to perform with Dorothea Williams a famed saxophonist and she has a quartet and she is voiced by Angela Bassett and animated with the most perfectly textured afro again the animation in this film was beautiful but she gives Joe this antidote and she says I heard this story about a fish he swims up to this older fish and says I'm trying to find this thing called the ocean the ocean says the older fish that's what you're in right now this says the young fish this is water what I want is the ocean and she just leaves him with that and that just really punched me because a lot of times we're begging for the things that we're already blessed with and you just need to zoom out and broaden your perspective and really pay attention to what you already have and be grateful for that instead of chasing something like really being present and mindful i think that's the mindfulness aspect and understanding what your true purpose is what I got from the movie. I really enjoyed it. And one of the last comments I really liked is after 22 figures it out and she's ready to live and she's about to jump, but she's scared. And so Joe is like, I'll go with you. And she's like, you know, you can't go with me. And he says, I know, but I'll go with you as far as I can. And that just really hit home to me because I just visited my parents and my grandmothers and knowing that they'll be ancestors and knowing that they have gone with me and will go with me as far as they can. So that really um, resonated with me too. Overall, I really enjoyed the film. I highly recommend it. Watch it on Disney+. Plus.